Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Wednesday night, Pastor Tony brought such a wonderful message on the importance of the word of God. And not living by fables, but by the word. And I think this must be very important because the Lord has had me in the same area. And I want us to look at it. I noticed one of the songs this morning that we sang, Speak, O Eternal God, from Thy Living Word. Do you know that the Word of God is alive? It's alive. It isn't just words. J.B. Phillips, when he translated the New Testament, said he felt like he had, a, was, had a hold of something that was alive. Now, I think we have yet to learn the power of the Word of God. You see, we were created in the image of God, and part of that image is to be able to speak a word. That's part of the image of God. To give me the privilege, you see, no other creature can speak a word. They can make sounds, communicate, but only the human being has been given the privilege to speak a word. Now, for a scripture, I'm maybe I'll just read a few scriptures here this morning in the Gospel of John, the first chapter. In verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, the Word was God. Uh, so it's interesting that the Bible calls Jesus the Word. Isn't that strange? That he's the Word. Now, God has given us the privilege to use words, and no other creature can use words, but man has been given that privilege. It says the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. Now, there are many scriptures about the Word, and I can't go into all of them, but just to touch a few here. The, thy Word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my pathway. The Word, thy Word, have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I will, and I want you to just notice, I don't know if you've really realized before, in Matthew, the eighth chapter, the centurion that came to Jesus. And you know the story, no doubt, and starting with the... He came to Jesus over his servant that was sick, and uh, he's a centurion, now he's not a Jew, and uh, Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. And the servant said, you don't need to come, but speak the word only. Just speak it. If you'll speak it, he'll be well. Now, and Jesus said, I haven't found so great faith in all Israel. Why? This centurion knew the power of the word. Faith knew the power of the word. He said to Jesus, if you'll speak it, it'll be done. So the lack of faith in many of us is that we don't know the power of the word. I'm trying to go s slow here. I want you to get this. But that centurion knew the power of the word, and he just simply said, Jesus, if you, if you speak it, and Jesus said, I haven't found such great, what was the faith was in, was in the power of the word. He said, Lord, if you speak it, it'll be so. And Jesus said, I haven't found such great faith in all of Israel. And he said to the centurion, you go your way. The way you've believed it is the way it's going to be. And he believed it, that if Jesus would speak it, that it would be so. So, the Bible says for us, it says to be swift to hear and slow to speak because of the power that's in the words that we speak. Oh, if we knew the power that was in the words that we speak. 
This is part of the image of God. And gee, the other word of the, the word of God says, if any man seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, this man's religion is vain. Why? Uh, he can, uh, it's amazing the destruction that can be done with the tongue. The words, there's power in the words. And uh, people do not, they're not aware of it. Do you know there isn't anything more powerful than the Word of God backed by the Holy Spirit? God's Word, He spoke the world, His Word. He said, let there be light, there was a, He spoke it. And I am amazed that God would allow such power to be put in us. The Bible says there in the, in the uh, for instance, the armor of God. If you, you realize the armor, oh, we're to put on the helmet, the salvation, the sword of the spirit, and the word of uh, the breastplate of righteousness and so forth. And take the, the shield of faith whereby we can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Do you know what those fiery darts are? They're words. And we're to have the shield of faith where we can quench the fiery darts. And do you realize that Christians may be the ones throwing the darts? Oh, Lord, stick with me. Oh, say, oh, that fiery dart came from the devil. It may have come from you. The fiery dart darts are words. And they may be thrown by the devil, may be back of it, but he may use you to throw it. Isn't that something? That I, as a Christian, may have thrown a fiery dart of the wicked at somebody? That's right. I may have thrown it. That's why the Bible is telling us here about words. We are created in the image of God. We need to be so careful what comes out of our mouth because we may be throwing a fiery dart of the devil at somebody. That's why it says, if any man bardeth not his tongue, if his religion is vain, if he seems to be religious and he can't, if he doesn't guard what comes out of his mouth, his religion is vain. So, these words from the fiery dart, the words are powerful. And we may have hurled a fiery dart of the devil at somebody because of the word that came out of our mouth. Somebody may leave church hurt because we hurled the fiery dart. So our words are powerful. They're, they're living. They can hurt, they can heal, they can destroy, they can make sick. Our words. Has anybody ever said anything to you and made you feel bad? Now notice what the Bible says. The Bible says we shall be given. We, you say, well, they're just words. I want to tell you something. God isn't fooling. He said every idle word that we speak will be given account. You know what an idle word is? An idle word is something that came out of our mouth that hurt somebody. This is really serious business, isn't it? Every idle word, and an idle word is that which comes out of our mouth which hurts somebody. And God said, if you do, you'll be accountable for it. Why? Because the words, our words are power. They're powerful. So, that these words that God has given us the privilege and we can encourage somebody, we can lift somebody, or we can hurt somebody or destroy somebody. You can destroy a man, you can destroy a man's character by the words you speak. So I'm trusting if there's any place where the words ought to be uplifting and encouraging, it ought to be when we come into the house of God. There ought to never be a hurtful word ever spoken in this house. 
And a lot of times people think, well, I'll give him peace of my mind. You better be careful about that because if you heard God said, I'll hold you accountable for every word that comes out of your mouth. You say, well, they deserved it. Well, maybe they did. But we better not be the one to give it. Let God take care of that. So to speak the word, the word of God is alive. It says they overcame in Revelation. They overcame him by the word of their testimony. That is Jesus in the word, the power of the word of God in our testimony. That's how we overcome the devil. So we overcome him by using, we overcome him by using the word of God. If I speak to the devil with the word of God, I have more power than he has. Because God has given me the privilege to use the word. And so with the word, I can speak to God. I marvel at that. I can speak to God my word. And uh, I have this privilege. I can speak to my fellow man. I need to be very careful what I say to my fellow man. I can speak to the devil. What power there is in words. And so... Uh, if now uh, the word of God here, as I said, is, is more powerful than a literal sword. It says the word of God backed by the Holy Spirit. God's word is sharper than any two edged sword, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. The word of God, it's alive. I uh, don't know if I can get that across to you or not, but God's word is living. It's not just words spoken. And neither are words just spoken out of us. We're speaking life or death or hurt or destroy or encouragement. And God's children ought to be using words that lift and encourage and never hurt and destroy. That ought to be what makes a Christian. A man who always encourages people, always lifts them, never discourages anyone, never downs anyone. And that's why when it would want to make a difference. That's why even when we get sick, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to speak the word of God. If you say, oh, I'm sick, I'm terrible, this is awful, you're speaking the wrong words. I was thinking of Bob Pierce or E. Stanley Jones, used to, he never would say he was tired. He used to always say, I'm refreshed in Jesus. And Bob Pierce was into India one time and the heat was tremendous over there. And strong men were weary. That big service is spoken to thousands of people. And Bob Pierce said, I think E. Stanley Jones was the only person here that didn't get tired. And I think he was 80 years of age. He never got tired. Because he would never say he was tired. Do you know that your words that come out of your mouth have a tremendous effect on you personally? Don't you like to be around people that always have encouraging words, lifting words? And they can help you to feel better and you can help to feel better? And so God has given us the power of words. I, I marvel that he should create us this way and give us such power. Now, if the devil can't get us to not use the word, see, the, the devil, God wants us to use his word. If it's the, against the devil, we can, we can use God's word against him. It says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. What, we use the word of God. That's what Jesus did when he was tempted of the devil in the wilderness. What do you use the word of God? The devil used it, but he had it out of context. And that's one thing the devil will try to do with you is to take the word of God and put it out of context. If he can't keep you from using it, then he'll get you to take it out of context and try to use it. And that's, uh, if the devil can't uh, get you to not use the word, then he'll get you to twist it or pervert it. And that will lose its power. He'll get you to dull the sword. The sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. And he'll try his best. If he can't get you not to use it, then he'll try to get you 
uh, to twist it or pervert it. That's exactly what he did with Eve in the Garden of Eden. He, she, he got her to twist God's Word. She twisted. I want to tell you, if, you tw if we twist God's Word around, the devil will try to get you to twist the Word of God. If he can get you to twist it, then he has destroyed his power. So, the Word of God, uh, when as a, the, the Word of God, it's so easy to twist and pervert. I, I pray, well, I pray often. Well, I, I don't know how often I pray, but every once in a while I pray, Oh, God, help me to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Yes. If, I, if I divide the Word of Truth wrongly, I can lead people astray from the pulpit. If I divide the Word of God wrongly, I can lead people away. It's possible to divide it wrongly. And so Paul, in speaking once to Timothy, to rightly divide the Word of Truth. If you don't, then that Word will lead people astray. And uh, I'll tell you, it takes God to help us to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Uh, the whole Christian world, and I'm glad some of it doesn't make any difference. The whole Christian world is divided. That's why you've got Calvinism on one side, Arminian on the other. Why? They're, they're both dividing the word, but it, uh, to me it doesn't make any difference. So take, for instance, the millennium. I don't care whether there's going to be a millennium or not. Why should I try to prove to you? That doesn't make any difference. You believe it? Wonderful. If I don't, I mean, I was never brought up with it, but why should I argue over it? Why should I lose my friendship with you over it? It doesn't make any difference. And why should we argue over th things of doctrine and split over it and, and lose our fellowship with one another over it? I don't care what you believe. If you love Jesus and we're going to get to heaven, that, that's all that matters. Brother, I don't care what you believe. Why should I try to prove to you differently and get in an argument with you over it and let words hurt and destroy and destroy ruin friendships and so forth and so on? Words. How important it is to use words. Uh, I tell you, it's so easy to twist them. Maybe I can add just one word here. I'm not, uh, who was it the other day? It was Rodney, I think, said, I'm not a pacifist. Well, I'm not either. And I have, and I have great appreciation for people who are pacifists, and I wouldn't try to change them in the world. And if they don't believe in war, that's perfectly all right with me. I certainly don't believe in war from the standpoint of just trying to have war. But I don't think the Bible teaches it. You say, well, the Bible says do not kill. I agree with you. The Bible says don't kill. But it all the same God also said to Israel, you go out and kill everybody in the place. Now, you're going to have to put those two together. Somehow, what was God saying? And David knew that. He knew that God sent him out to kill, but David also knew that he was never to kill any individual personally for personal revenge. He knew that. He was rightly dividing the word of truth. He was not to kill any person. That was wrong, but if God ordered him then in battle to go out and kill in an army, then he was not, he was not disobeying the word. He was rightly divided. We've got to rightly divide God's word. If you get off on a tangent on one side or the other, you will not rightly divide it. But like I said, I'm not those that are pacifists. That's perfectly all right. I wouldn't argue with anybody. If they believe it, that's fine. I'm just simply stating my own point of view. I'd hate to live in a country that didn't have an army. I don't know. I wouldn't want to live in it. Uh, but I know that God could take care of us. But still, he asked Israel to go to battle, and countries will still go to battle and war. And any soldier who's gone to battle and kills anybody, to me, he's not accountable in the least. I was preaching one time in Ford, and a young man came to me after the service and said, Can God save me? He said, I was in the war and the battle, and he said, I killed so many people. Uh, he said, Can God save me? I said, Brother, God can save you. He can heal, he forgives every matter of sin, doesn't make any difference what it is. And if your government has sent you off to war, then you're not responsible for that because God sent armies to war and God will forgive you for that as quick as anybody else and maybe even quicker than somebody that sits in church and sends a fiery dart of the enemy and destroys some young person that may never come back to church again. They've killed with their words. God have mercy on us.
that we don't destroy with our words, but we lift, we encourage, we pray with them. It doesn't make any difference what they've done. I don't care what sin they've committed. Because God is a great forgiver of sins. I want every sinner to know that. I want him to know that God will save him. I want him to know that I can pray for everybody that's sick. You say, well, God doesn't heal everybody. Well, I just leave that with God. He still says to pray for the sick, so I do that. And God is a great God. God loves us. But he wants us to keep our mouth shut. Come on. Keep your mouth shut, Bob. You don't need to say that. It doesn't make any difference if you say it. You don't need to prove you're right. <laughs> Why do I need to prove to somebody I'm right? If I'm right, I'm right. And I know it. And if I know it, that's all that counts. If you don't know it, I'm sorry for you. If you don't know I'm right. But I know it. And I'm, I, that, that satisfies me. I just feel sorry for you if you don't know that. So a lot of things we don't need to say. We simply do not need to say, and I believe that we'll all feel better, we'll love each other better. And uh, if I've got to prove to you I'm right and you're wrong, we've, I've destroyed our friendship right away. I've destroyed it. And so God wants us to love each other, but to be very extremely careful what comes out of our mouths. And in order that we might love each other and encourage one another, and if there ever be any place in the world where a person ought to be able to come in and get uplifted, uh, it ought to be in the house of God. Amen. I, and it's, it's too bad it isn't that way so many times. Like somebody invited one man to church, said, Brother, why don't you come down to church? He said, No, thank you. I've got enough troubles of my own. Yeah, that sounds like a joke, but that's true. There's times when I wouldn't want to invite people to come, especially if anything, I wouldn't want them to get on a board. I said, I hope they don't put that man on the board. It could destroy him. Yeah, it could. Isn't church a wonderful place to be? See, if we can be what God wants us to be, it should be the most wonderful place in the world. I'll go down to the house of God. I can get encouraged. I can be prayed for to be healed. I'll tell you, I can get blessed, and I know that I'm not going to get hurt down there. Wouldn't that be one? Isn't that the way God wants it? I can go down there, and I know I'll never be hurt. It's like Amy Carmichael had a sign on her, the wall of the children's place there in India. She said, your reputation, it's printed on the wall, your reputation is safe with us while you're away. You don't need to worry, you're not going to be talked about. While you're gone, your reputation's safe with us while you're gone. You don't need to worry, you'll not be talked about. Isn't that a wonderful attitude for Christians to have, God's children to have? Well, so the church of the living God ought to be a place where we can be encouraged and lifted and our words are powerful, they heal, they destroy, they help, and God help us as Christians that we may have the words that come out of our mouth that will not only help us, but help others.